This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. With drag and drop templates, spend less time on a website and more time on your art. See if they can reschedule. Ah, box of new toys. Well, it's not really mine, it's a demo, but same thing. I'll clear the schedule. Sony A7S3, 4K 2460 and 120 frames per second. All at 422 10-bit with scalable uncompromised bit rates. New gapless back illuminated Sony sensor. Scanning shows 15.1 stops of latitude. We field test citing a usable 13 stops in S-Log3 or HLG. Stop taking all the good lines. Yo, yo, Sony A7S III is finally here. Hallelujah. I'm just kidding. This is the Mark II. It's all banged up. Oh, my God. I had it for four days, like a month ago, and I was supposed to do this video then. They send you, like, this unmarked box, and there's a bunch of stickers on it everywhere that say things. 1930. Yeah, so maybe these are part numbers. I don't know. This is the funny thing. You know who sent this to me? <laughs> MKBHD. <laughs> That's who had this camera first. What's up, Marquez? Yeah, I mean, I guess my ego is hurt that they didn't send it to me first, but... That's a $12,000 lens. Does anyone have a two pound counterweight? So it's definitely not balanced, but I think it's close enough. On a gimbal. But also with the 360 cam mounted. On. Okay, well played, Sony. I, I respect that. I was supposed to do this video then, and then life got a hold of me. That's you. <laughs> this baby has decided so much already. The funny thing is, I figured out that creativity and passion really come from doing the things that you like to do in life, which is hospital food's not really that good. But your dad snuck in truffle oil. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I want to say thank you guys for wishing me well. The wife is doing good. The baby is doing good. Not born yet. We're in the clear. So let's talk about my other baby. So maybe we just like bounce a little bit of light. And you know, by now you guys have seen some incredible footage already. People have talked about this camera. But I did put the A7S III through its paces. <gasps> <gasps> Oh, dude, it's gonna work. It's gonna work. That's good. Great. We don't even need it. We don't even roll sound. It's fine. Who's clutch? Who's clutch? Who's clutch? I, I, I don't have a replica. Ready? Ready? Just go. Okay, ready? All right, ready? All right, ready? All right. <laughs> this is gonna work. This is gonna work. I did want to share with you guys my thoughts, a couple of limitations with the camera to get you guys ready, and for you guys to figure out is this camera actually worth the price tag? <laughs> you should have seen us yesterday. I was trying to do it on the one wheel, you know? <laughs> so that's so not how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had some larger plans. Yeah, all right. Okay, uh, you imported that lot and we're good to go. Let's roll. You're not rolling on any of this, right? Yeah, I pretty much scrapped those, but not before giving it the old stabilization test. But don't film any of this. This gimbal and drone will test the merits of any in-camera stabilization, including it in active mode with the 1.1 crop. So not as good as I would like, but very impressive when it's on a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. With lenses equipped with in-body stabilization like a 70 to 200, it gets really, really good. So normally crops bother me, but considering you're still getting 4K and for real estate shoots, I normally shoot at 12 millimeters anyway. 1.1 equals 13.2. So you, you're still in that same ballpark of under 14 millimeter focal lengths for filming these epic wide 
homes. So for me, uh, that's an easy trade-off for that extra level of stabilization. You know, you wouldn't think that a 7200 would belong on a gimbal, but I love 7200 on a gimbal. Having that extra stabilization makes those shots even easier. I'm used to having to shoot at a higher frame rate, and now I can shoot at 4K24 at 200 millimeters, and those shots are 100% usable, and there's not a lot of vibration going on. So, uh, you know, Bravo, another tool I didn't know I wanted, now I have. Normally you would do all the shaking and post because of rolling shutter, yeah. but the rolling shutter on, on the A7S III is like three times less noticeable than the uh, A7 III. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, you, so that must be also like a product of improved IBIS, It has right? to do with the processor is so fast, it's three times faster, uh, and you're only processing 12 megapixels. So, I mean, we're getting really close to global shutter here yeah, with yeah. without global shutter. <laughs> Frankly, I never go like this, so rolling shutter means very little to me, except for in the cases when I'm hanging out of a car filming objects at high frame rates. And then you get vertical lines that are starting to look skewed. Notice here, we're shooting 4K60. None of these lines are skewed. They're straight and they're perpendicular and they're not distracting at all. As a filmmaker, I think that's one of the key things of filmmaking. You don't want items that are unrelated to the story distracting the audience. Another win, they we are getting that much closer to global shutter. I've always been impressed with Sony's cameras, even the 8-bit codec. And so now that we're playing around with 10-bit and we're really pushing around these colors, oh my God. God. What really impressed me how easy it was for me to color grade and for me to get natural, vibrant, commercial colors out of there. A different look than what we're used to seeing from the A7S II, particularly now with increased 10 bit bit depth, right? You know, when I do my color grading stuff, I'm actually having an easier time pushing colors to ground and pulling keys, which to be expected. So this is gonna be a really, really creative camera for me moving forward. So I've been working on my real estate tutorials and I held off on launching them until I had a chance to get my hands on the Sony a7S III because I wanted to recommend the best camera for real estate. And for the last five years that I've shot homes, I have recommended this camera. You know, simply because the a7S II all around had the best dynamic range, color, selection of full frame lenses, low light, and I had custom color grades where I could just get you know, that color looking amazing and then move on, right? So out of all the cameras that I've shot with, I've tested quite a few, 1DX2, all the Black Magics. I honestly think that the Sony a7S III is now the champ. It now holds the most amount of value in terms of what I would want for shooting these homes. The biggest factor for me is the dynamic range. And for someone who's made a living filming these homes, making them look bright and welcoming, even half a stop of dynamic range is worth the upgrade. Hope you guys know that I have been a Sony fanboy for a really long time, but I've also spent more money on Canon cameras, including this guy, and I've also made more videos on Black Magic. So this was a really good outing for me just to really get my hands into this camera and figure out what, you know, is this the best filmmaking camera on the market? You know, frankly, I wish I had the camera longer, but I liked it so much that I did buy two of them. I do think that this is going to enhance my level of filmmaking. I mean, even the 240 frames per second is in that range of usable. So I will say in color grading this, I did notice that there is some definite noise going on. I don't wanna say that there's more noise in the a7 III, but the noise is larger. And I think it's just because the a7 III is a down sampled 6K image to 4K. And so there's, you know, it, there's a little bit of cleanup that's going on when you have that process happening. Most of the profiles look like there's a little bit of sharpening going on and we can see that in the noise and just what the style of noise is. 
like this is like a stupid little tiny problem to have. It's like someone who could taste the difference between a $250 bottle of wine and a $2,500 bottle of wine would probably notice this. Most people are not gonna see this noise at all. And in fact, it cleans up quite nicely when you open DaVinci Resolve and you add denoise, it takes care of it. So it's probably just the relationship to the sensor. It has a new thinner copper wiring sensor that hasn't been released in any cameras yet, not that I know of. We're talking about sensor science that just is not on the market yet. It's not 8K. If you want 8K, There's a combination here that will, come on, man. Ah. I think the trade-offs are totally worth it. I mean, this camera, the frame rates and the color and the dynamic range alone has me completely sold. And I'm real, real excited about implementing them in my filmmaking process. So the biggest mystery to me is the ISO being cleaned up at 16,000. Now this was brought to my attention by Gerald who, you know, did these tests with his crazy light chart thing, which is just, uh, that goes into a whole level of nerdism that I am not in, but I respect that. Because I respect my sport and I respect the Mr. McMahon. You're a professional. A professional. And I found something very surprising. First off, as expected, the dynamic range gets worse as you increase your ISO, hitting its lowest point of just under 10 stops at ISO 12,800. But then when you move to ISO 16,000, all the noise is removed and the dynamic range shoots back up again. And if you look closely, you can actually see the image flash in a way that's very reminiscent of a dual gain circuit switching over. Now he thought it was a dual gain ISO and Oda says you're full of shit. I didn't say you're full of shit. Okay. She says you're full of shit. You guys don't agree. I saw your video, Gerald. It was very well done. What do you want? What do you think this thing is? 16,000 ISO, it cleans up. Yeah, I mean, it, does, it, it would make no sense if it's, a, like, okay, if it's actually dual gain, that makes no sense. Right. right. I think you can treat it like that if it's easier for you to, uh, you know, shoot that way, if it's an easier reminder. Yeah. I think it performs like dual gain in terms of how you should treat it. But it would make no sense for it to be dual gain at 16,000 ISO. Right. When I was doing some late night tests, I was shocked at, you know, how much noise was at 12,000 ISO in S-Log3. Like, it's a lot of noise to yeah. cut. It's a, it's a ton to cut through. So my hunch is that it's just it, anything above that, you wouldn't be able to denoise. So they just do that. Pro they, they're actually giving us a noise-free image so that we can get raw via HDMI, true raw, but then at 16,000, they're like, you, you need a usable, right. You wouldn't be able to use it anyway. So we're just gonna go ahead and put in the noise reduction in there. So after 16,000, you're not getting a real, you're not getting true raw signal. You don't have a solid answer for me. You had the camera four days. I mean, you don't, you don't, you don't. <laughs> That's all it takes. That's all. You know what's funny is that this bugs me because I don't have the camera. Now. Every time we talk, I get upset because I want to test something else and then I don't have the camera to check it. But what if it's just a bug? And it's, it's probably not what this is, but what if for some reason there's like a bug where even in ProRes RAW, the high ISO noise reduction just sort of kicks on full force at, at 16,000 and it wasn't like it's like almost right, like parts. Right, right. So if you guys have any theories as to what... We both want to know. Me more than Gerald, but maybe it is dual gain ISO. I don't know. It's probably not dual gain ISO. That would be incredible. Let me know in the comments. Also, I have footage for you guys. If you guys want to mess around with some of the footage that you saw today, there's 22 clips. You can download it totally free. Go to my website. So I wanted to thank the sponsor of this episode, Squarespace. You know, it wasn't that long ago that I was just a guy with one camera, one lens, scraping by, doing the same thing as uh, many of you guys out there. And now I live in like uh, an amazing world of opulence and privilege, totally self-generated. And one of the
the ways that I was able to get there was by selling digital assets. For the last 10 years, I've been a paying customer of Squarespace because it's so easy to design your website, set up a commerce structure and get paid. Whether it's selling digital assets like my color grades or sound design presets, they've made it so easy with their drag and drop templates. It is something that you can totally do yourself and it looks good. Check it out for yourself. Get 10% off your first year or domain. Ah. Uh, I know it's been a while. Uh, I got some stuff in the works though, so you will be seeing my face again very soon. Ready? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> we lost it. We, we lost the transmission. <laughs> anyway, it's crunch time, so baby's coming any day now. Wish me luck. Wish me luck. I'll see you later.